Terry. We were talking about who to look at. Uh, when it comes down to uh, analyzing the condition of the relationship, right? And my suggestion is that you look at yourself. Now this is going to be a real hard thing to do because when you have to look at yourself and you have to look at yourself from the aspect of possibly uh, being irrational, uh, being selfish, uh, being fantasy focused, driven. It's, it's kind of hard to do that. It really is. It's painful. That's a reality. It's very painful. So what happens, and this is, this is, this is where the, the id is so powerful, because, because it, 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 it avoids reality. Therefore, when the person begins to experience discomfort or pain or any discomfort or dis-ease, the id automatically seeks something else to make it feel better, to avoid dealing with that. Right? It doesn't want to deal with that. I hear you, but I'm not, no, I'm not dealing with none of that. And it keeps on going, and it, it, it makes you feel like you're not even considered. It's not being uh, uh, sensitive to your needs. You know, the person just, just seeming to, to just like dismiss everything that's being put on the table about the conduct that's being presented. It does it automatically. But I want you to look at yourself. I want you to make an attempt to look at yourself and ask yourself, are you in this category where you're allowing your id to run your life? And if the first response that you have is no, then that's your answer. Your id is running your life. Your id is running your life. Because it's primitive, it's instinctual, it's irrational, it's inconsiderate, it's selfish. And for me to put those kind of labels on myself and say that's what I am, it's difficult. Now, you can say, well, in some cir circumstances, I may very well be that. Well, this may be the time where you may want to admit that in some instances you are. But if the instance that you are is brought to your attention, at the time, denial is the first thing that we do. Because the id rejects that. The id doesn't accept that. No, that's what you said. That's how you see it. I don't see it that way. And then they, they, they tell you in a very convincing manner. And you look at them like, are you crazy or something? And no, they have the, they're, they're being very sincere in their defense of their conduct. Because they really don't see it from that way. Because remember, the id is not attached to anything around it. It's only attached to itself. So when you sit and you have to write a list of things that you do, behaviors that you do, off-putting behaviors that have been pointed out to you, even things you don't agree with, put down those things that somebody has told you about your conduct. And then I want you to look, if you look at the person you're currently with, for instance, if you're currently in a relationship, I want you to write a list of all those things that that person says about you. Agree or disagree. But specifically, you want to put the things that you disagree with. Right? I want you to list all of those things. Then I want you to go to the relationship before that if you had one. Now, if you had one. If you, had a, if you were in a relationship prior to your current one, I want you to make a list of all of those things that person said about your character. And I guess and if you're not with them, it's really a good, a good self-assessment because you can pretty much make the determination as to whether that relationship ended legitimately or illegitimately. Could you have saved that relationship? Right? And I want you to do the same thing for any relationships that you've had. Okay? Any relationships. E even if it, it was dating and it was starting out and it never came to fruition. Right? It never came to fruition. Right? There was a reason why it didn't. And I want you to list those things when you were dating. All those things that that person said. 
and I, I want you to write them all down. All those things that that person said, especially the things that they said about your character that you are not in agreement with. Especially those things. And then I want you to, to, to take another step. I want you to go into your workplace and I want you to do the same thing with your immediate supervisor and others who you work with. I want you to look at all those things that those people have said that are negative about your character, especially those things that you disagree with. They do the same thing with school, do the same thing with the block you live on, do the same thing with family. I want you to look at all those things. This is a real in-depth study of self. Because when you're in a relationship with someone and they point it out to you during the course of the relationship, you never hear it. You never internalize it. You never grasp the concept of how right they may be. You never will. The it doesn't do that. The id is primitive. The id is instinctual. The id is irrational. It will never happen. It will never happen. This is not something you can conceptualize intellectually. You can't. You can't possibly be able to grasp the concept of how the id is functioning. But you can learn about the id and what it does in what it does to you. its role within you. You can't understand that. And when you see it play out in your life, no matter what, you still won't, you still won't accept it. The id won't allow you to, not on its own. That's the role of the ego and the superego. But we haven't gotten there yet. So you have to look at this and look at all these lists and you say, and you start seeing patterns. This is how you start learning about self. You start seeing patterns. You start seeing patterns. She said this, she said that, he said this, he said that in workplace, he said this, she said that, yeah. and school, yep. He said this, he said that, and you got your own little map here. And we call it a horse concept. And the horse concept is this. If at least three people say it's a horse, it's a good chance you want to start looking at some saddles. Right? So this is your own horse concept. Right? If you truly want to grow, if you truly want to further develop other areas of self, because there's so much unconscious self Right? That we'll never come to understand. We'll never come to understand why we do some of the things we do. Never. We don't spend our lives seeking conscious awareness. We just don't. We, we spend our lives looking outside of ourselves for the development of self. Geographic changes. Cars. Clothing intellectualizing our Afrocentrism, our Native American culture connection, our European connection, or distancing ourselves from certain things. Everything outside of us. We'll read our Quran, we'll read our Bible, we'll read our Torah, everything outside of us. And even in reading those things, still not understanding what it means to be in alignment with the Creator. And you can't get in alignment with something that's innate, externally. You can't. What goes on inside determines, should determine, how you react to the world around you. We had examples. And even those examples, those who came to deliver the messages, had more of an alignment because of their being. And their being is, as the Creator said, is as such. It didn't stop them from being human beings. They still had the same within them, the id, the ego, and the superego. 
and those things still played out. But the ego and the super ego are where that it begins to be <coughs> managed. But we haven't gotten there yet. We're still on the it. So you have to see where even you are capable of doing the exact same things you're pointing your finger at your partner about. You're sitting there telling your wife, she this, she that, she this, she that, you this, and you that, and you don't see this. No, they, they can't. And we and, and vice versa. The wife tells us his husband is the same thing. You don't understand, you this, and you that, and I try to tell you this, and you don't never listen to me. We say these things to one another all the time. And we don't understand the significance of the id. And that's why the id is dominating our world today. The id dominates the world today. It's not egos. It's the id. The id is that side of self that cares about nothing. And we want to blame it. And blame it on the devil. Oh, the devil made me do it. We hear people say that. Right? That the alignment of self with God is your responsibility. When you look at yourself as you have been created, as you have been created, you will see where the conflict lies. And the conflict lies within you. Hence the reason for that internal war that goes on. That holy war that goes on. Because you have the id, the ego, and the superego. And this much of self, you're conscious about. But then you have all this much of self that you're unconscious about and this is what's running your life and you don't know why. And the id is below the surface. It's, it's about this much, about that much of the id above the surface, but the id is below the surface, right, in the pre-consciousness and then there's the unconsciousness, but there's very little conscious of the id. It's the ego and the superego that helps manage that conscious aspect of the id. But we ain't got there yet. We're still talking about the id. So, when we look at having <clears throat> no comprehension of objective reality, that means that everything that comes from me will always be subjective. That means whatever I come up with is what it is. I don't, I, I, yeah, I see it's blue, but it, you're saying it's cerulean blue. I'm saying it's royal blue. Now I can have both the colors sitting right in front of me based on Crayola. Crayola says cerulean blue looks like this. Crayola says royal blue looks like that. But I don't have to see it from that, that way. And the it doesn't. What the head sees is, how is that going to benefit me? That's all I want to know. What does that do? I don't care what blue it is. What's the benefit for me? So now you done took me to the paint store because we, we're going to paint the house. And you want me to help you pick out a color. I'm it driven. I'm it driven. Right? It driven. I don't care nothing about it. I don't care. So how much of participation am I going to be, right? Now, if us going to look at paint in the paint store, one over me getting to the barbershop, we really got a problem. Because I don't want to be here. So not only do I not care about the color of the paint, I only care, right, about when I reach the barbershop and how crowded it's going to be when I get there. Because I'm usually at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now I'm here with you picking out some paint 
and I probably won't get there till about 11 o'clock. Oh, and then all the homies going to be gone. See, Mike and them, they usually get there about the same time. So now I'm going to get there where I don't know none of these Negroes up in here. I don't want to be up in there with them, right? I want to, you know, my man, that's our connect. That's, that's my hookup, you know. Every other Saturday we get together and that's the crew. That's what we do. So is the significance the haircut or the significance the crew? Well, it's both. Because when you're dealing with the id, the id wants everything its way. It doesn't matter. And even if I get there at 11 o'clock and I meet some other brothers and we have good dialogue, it didn't matter. Because you took me out of my flow. You took me away from what I want to do. Now I got to go do what you want to do. So I don't care. And my, my being with you is not going to make it any better. You, then you're going to be made to feel like I should have left you home, Negro. This is what the id does. And listen, people will avoid this subject. People will avoid this topic like the plague. Because people, we not, listen, none of us want to believe that we have this part of self that is destructive. Because that's all the id is. It's destructive. Now I'm talking about without the ego and the superego. We're just strictly talking about a person and the id aspect of the person. Period. The id aspect of the person. Right? You're having sex. The only thing you can think of is, you know, you want to come. You want to, I got to come. Come on, I, got, I need to come. The tension. Remember I, talk, I told you when, when the id is not being satisfied, right? It's tension. And it's tense until it's satisfied. So if I am, uh, if I'm horny that morning, and I want to have sex, right? The only thing on my mind is what? Having sex. I need to come. I need to. That's what I need to do. So that's that 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 aspect of the 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 id now. That sexual need has to be satisfied, right? And then. You get in there and bang away with reckless abandon because you want to get your thing off. Not thinking about her. I don't know. We both need to get ours. Just because you want some don't mean that you gotta just be the one only one to come away from that, you know, war, drained, whooped. But the Ed doesn't say that. The Ed says, I'm getting mine. And the only focus is on getting mine. You don't care that you, that you, uh, 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 that she's crying, hold up, wait a minute, stop, that hurts, none of that. Everything is just, and then after you're done, and the id is satisfied, okay, and she looking at you like, oh, you know, I'm, me? Nah, I'm cool. Well, what took you so long? You gotta hurry up, hey! Eh? Come on, you're too slow. So insensitive. Everything is insensitive. But I, my needs are met. That's what the aid does. Yo, babe, what's up with breakfast? When are you gonna cook? Now in the tent. You see the face, the facial expression change. You tent. Wow, what's up? When are you gonna, when are you gonna cook? No, it's like nine o'clock. What's up with that? Never mind that she gets up every morning early, just like you do. And why can't she just lay in the bed and get some extra sleep too? You don't know how to cook, dude? It goes back to that list of ideal wife and ideal wife and what it is that you want out of a wife because your expectation is that she cooks. And you'll, you'll go find, oh, well, it says right here that the wife, that's what the role of the wife is. No, but it also says in there that when the husband helps his wife in her chores, how many blessings you get with that. You missed that part. Right, that means you can wash some dishes, too. That means that you can cook, too. That means that you can go do windows, too. You can do laundry, too. But that's when we start talking about the ego, the super ego, and we ain't got there yet. So it's a host of things that you have to begin to look at when you're talking about your own character, not somebody else's character. Because I guarantee you somebody took all of this and ran away with it and went to 
talking about their partner instead of looking at themselves. And this applies to me. Listen, what I tell y'all on these videos applies to me too. I'm not exempt from these things. I'm not exempt from any of these conditions. I'm a human being. I'm a human being. So this is for me too. It's not just for you. And when I say it, it reinforces it within me, the need to continue down that path of learning about self, of self-improvement, right? Of self-improvement. Because that's what we all have to continue to do. We all have to continue to improve ourselves. So that's important, right? You have to begin to look at things from the lens of others. You have to learn how to be objective and not subjective, right? But that only comes through the development and proper management of the ego and superego. And yeah, we haven't gotten there. So, I don't want to get there today. It's not my intent to get there today. Because if I get there today, then that means that the id, right, will have won. And why do I say that? Well, you've been hearing about the id throughout this whole show. That's all you've been hearing about. The id, the id, the id, the id, the id. And what the id has been telling you, probably for the last... 45 minutes, if not more. The past hour and 45 minutes. It's okay. So when is he going to get to the super ego and the ego? Because, I mean, enough enough about the id. That's what your id is telling you. Your id is telling you that. Your id is saying, well, listen, I'm not... I, listen, I, I need to hear the whole thing. Just give me the whole thing. Because the id wants what it wants, and it wants it now. If the, if the show is about the id, the ego, and the super ego, then... Why, why are you, no, it, go back now. The title of the show is what? Snap, crackle, and then flopped. Right? So it's three parts. As the id, the ego, and the super ego are. Three parts. One person, three parts. Three parts. So if you don't think you have multiple personalities, take another look. Because you do. Nothing like a good cup of coffee on an 81 degree weather day. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 80, it, well, it's going to be 81 here. I think maybe even 83 here. Uh, yeah, today, tomorrow, the next day, then it drops down to about, uh, I think, 69, 71, somewhere around there, for a couple of days. Then it goes back up. It's like a poolside day today, uh, outdoors. Um, and again, that's that id. It's not thinking about anything else. See, see the id? See how it does? Y'all up north freezing. Y'all sitting there, y'all probably got little stocking caps on, little furry caps, your socks. And, Sitting up there with your robe, talking about, oh, man, y'all turn the heat, I ain't turn the heat on, it ain't that cold yet. You know, give me some hot tea. And I'm sitting here with a, well, I got a sweater on so I can look, you know, halfway appropriate. Uh, and I got, listen, I got, I got a long sleeve sweater on and a cap. Neither will I be wearing outside today. The only thing I'll be wearing outside today is this probably just this, this uh, t-shirt I got underneath with another shirt over top of it because I, I dress in layers. Um, and my intent is to go to the gym today. Yep, pump and run time today. Got to get back on that flow. Been off that flow now. Been out of the gym now for about two months. For about two months, been out been out of the gym. Feeling a little fluffy these days. I uh, got to get that thing tightened back up. And, uh, you know, I smoke cigars and, uh, you know, I need to get my cardio back back together because, you know, when you smoke, uh, you know, you, you really need to stay on top of, uh, of your cardio even more so and exercise even more so because, 
you know, of the, the harmful effects of smoking. Yes, I know there are harmful effects. I'm not rationalizing or justifying. And, you know, my aide told me not to smoke. My aide to say, hey, none of y'all business. I like to smoke. So, but I'm not going to say that to you. And that's where the management of uh, the uh, the aide comes into play when we do, when we start talking about the ego and the super ego. Uh, but we're not there yet. So, yeah, so the exercise piece is, is, is really important. Um, and sometimes the, the id can get in the way of uh, being, uh, of successfully achieving a desired fitness goal because the id just seeks to get things immediately. So the id said, listen, just take all these, uh, these supplements. You can get to supplement this HDB, this, this 92 KO and, 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 you know, all this stuff. And listen, you can, you can probably outdo Arnold and look, you know, just as massive with about 60 days. Oh, then something comes on the market that's give you results in 30 days. What? Let me get my hands in that. Oh, like a straight, like, dope fiend. I, what? Get, get me that. You don't see the addictive side of you and the, the unreal, unrealistic uh, 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 perception that you have just embraced because somebody put an ad on the paper and said, listen, 30 days, you can look like this. You'd be like, I can look like this in 30 days? Yo, I'm already halfway there. I put a couple of them things in me and I'll be like, yo, I'll be on the beach, you know, flexing for the girlies and, uh, you know, my wife gonna be like jealous, but, uh, but see how the head just pushed everything a side that is meaningful to you. Yeah, that's what that's what the it does. It kind of it it creates this fantasy. It creates an entire fantasy of everything. And I was just talking about getting my pump and run on, getting myself back into the gym, you know, trying to feel healthy again, you know, getting a little buff back up again. Because you know, when you stop lifting, right? You know, everything just kind of like just softens up and you don't see the definition and, you know, the, the muscle just starts going whoop. And as soon as you get back in there and start pumping, stuff start standing up and you're like, yo, what's up, man? You start walking differently. That, but the, the id, you know, has a way of uh, defeating all of that. Because the id ain't never satisfied. You know? Or you need to stop eating that stuff. Yeah, don't tell her don't cook that stuff no more. Don't buy that stuff. Yeah, we got to get this now. I got no, we got to make this happen. I got to be cut, I got to be rippled. You know, and you just, nothing else matters. And, and even, you don't change anything. So like, for instance, if you decide, to, and this is what the head does, if you decide that you wanna, like maybe start uh, investing into some other things in your craft that you do, right? But then now all of a sudden you get on this exercise mission, right? And this whole exercise mission, right? Because your head is telling you to get immediate results, to get this, 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 this you start spending more money than you need to spend on supplements. And every time something come up new, you want, you want, oh, I gotta get that nitro what? And I can get what? So you're trying to get all of this, these, these things, and like your whole life is just based on fantasy. It's just based on fantasy. You start buying all these products. Next thing you know, you got the whole kitchen counter filled up with all these products, and not only do do you get these products for yourself, but you draw your wife into it, into it now. Babe, listen, um, don't, don't use that, that uh, canola oil on my chicken. Just use the olive oil, because that canola stuff is going to clog up my arteries, this, 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 and I need to have the extra, extra virgin olive oil by, uh, uh, by Santilli's, you know, because Santilli's got real, they, they straight, right, from Italy, they, that's the good stuff, so I need, Right, and then I want, uh, you got you got to get a high speed uh, juicer because that juicer there, that thing is old and it ain't high speed and that stuff got to be broken down, you know, it's got to break down the atoms and the, the molecules and that stuff, it got to be smooth and like, because once you break them down, then I drink it and they get back together inside of me and I go, oof. Yeah. But I mean, that's, the it does, it's, it's fantasy. There's nothing real about that. Now with a little literal, am I defining of it? But what I'm saying to you is this is what we do as human beings within ourselves all the time about everything. The article clearly told you that it stays in this condition throughout your life. 
it doesn't change, the egg will always be that. It will always be just like that. It will always be immature, irresponsible, inconsiderate, juvenilistic. It will always be that. Always. The egg will never change. It will never change. And then you say, well, Sabia, if, if it will never change, what does that mean for my future? I mean, if I keep having failed relationships as a result of my inability to interact appropriately with the world around me because my id is out of control. I mean, I don't understand it. What's your point? Because all I'm doing is living a life seeking satisfaction for myself. Uh, how is that a joyful, blissful life? can answer that but if I answer that now then I'll be going into the dialogue about the, the ego and the super ego and, and we ain't there yet so before even trying to go there just take begin to take a look at how your id how it is running your life That's what you have to start looking at. And I think this is probably the most appropriate show uh, this week because we have a new year that's about to come in. A new year is about to come in. And I don't, I have, listen, I have a daily resolution. I don't have a new year's resolution because I don't know that I'm going to see the damn year. I have a daily resolution that if God wakes me up the next day that I'm going to try to be better this day than I was on the other days that I'm going to make every effort to help another person and when I mean another person I mean a person other than myself because if I'm blessed to wake up the next day I may be helping the same person but someone other than myself I wake up every day always striving to improve. Always striving to achieve something positive. I can be doing anything else, you know, on a Monday morning. I'm off today. I'm off on Sunday mornings where this show typically airs every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Sasspot can be seen live on Facebook and, and within about 24 to 48 hours it can also be seen the same show on my daddy's right here YouTube educational station the same video it's just it's edited it got a whole opening and closing to it and it's it's edited through my video editing software right whole different picture right because these videos on Facebook are there, but the ones on YouTube are, are also there and they have a better picture clarity because my camera is a Canon Sure Shot. And then I have video editing software that I purchased also, uh, which uh, allows me to put the whole thing together, right? So all these things will be there forever. So when I'm gone, I was just talking to my wife the other day, I said, so if I did this for the next 20 years, babe, what was the number we came up with? Can you, can you put that up for me? So I said, if I did a show, like I'm doing now, on, my, on Sundays I do Sunspot from 9 to 11. On Tuesdays I do The Wise View from 6.30 to 8. So I said, so if I did uh, uh, a recording, like I'm doing right now, twice a week, for 20 years, how many episodes would that be? And I think, I think the number was somewhere around uh, 2,000 and something, 4,000 and something uh, videos 
that would be left behind. Uh, I'm not math minded, so. Uh, but I said, that's what I'm leaving. And that will be there forever. So if Facebook ever goes away, it's still on YouTube. Right? If YouTube ever goes away, I don't know if they just remain somewhere out there in cyberspace. I don't know. I don't see YouTube ever uh, ending because YouTube is still evolving. I'm still working on how to do a live recording from YouTube as well. But uh, YouTube is still expanding and Facebook is as well. But a lot of things can happen within 20 years. Uh, especially when you talk about new um, presidential administrations coming in and the changes that begin to be made throughout the world in terms of technology. Uh, but just think, one day you might just be able to put, put your eyeglasses on. I think you can do that now, too, and just watch an episode of Side Spot or The Wise View while you're sitting on the bus and never, you know, and never raise a hand. You just, you know, blow in the air and it comes on and blow down and it goes off. I don't know, it's all kind of technology and stuff that they're making. But the point that I'm making to you is that uh, when you look at yourself, you have to begin to look at yourself from the perspective of just the id. You have no morality. You have no balance. You are just primitive. You are just instinctual in all your daily doings. You are inconsiderate, you are just impulsive, you are just disregarding of everything and everyone around you. I want you to take it in the rawest of forms. I want you to look at you in the rawest of forms. And I guarantee you when you write that list, you're not going to write everything down. Because if you, if you disagree with the thing a person said about you, why would you put it down? You don't want to see the patterns. That's why you wouldn't put it down. The aide is going to tell you, you ain't going to write that. For what? Matter of fact, why are you writing any of this? Who is Sabir? To be telling you what to do. You should be telling Sabir. You should be giving him the suggestions on how he can get his life right. <coughs> I'm telling you. And that's not, that's not the brain. That's not the mind. That's the conscious. The conscious of an unconscious condition. That's what you have to look at. So because you say something, and because your eyes are wide, wide open, your eyes can also be wide shut. They can be wide shut. And that's actually, when, when you look at yourself from just from, from the concept of the id, you are looking at life with your eyes wide shut. Because you don't see anything else but you. Everything you see that you're focusing on, you're focusing on simply because you are like a predator. You are looking for those things around you that service you, not anybody else, just you. And what a world, right? What a world to live in. And if you take that person and you go back to the episode that I did on single life versus married life, you'll go back and you'll see, excuse me, how a single-minded person has such a difficult time in making an adjustment to be in a marriage, to be in a relationship, to live with someone else. To live with someone else. The transition is so difficult. And that's part of the reason why the transition is so difficult. Because for me to move out of this condition where everything was about me, there is a level of comfort for that. And we have to understand that. It's a very, it's a, it's a very comfortable place to be. It's a very safe place to be, being single. Or being in a relationship with someone but not living with them. It's a very safe place to be. It's safe there because uh, whether you're coming over here to visit, whether I'm going over there to visit, one way or another, it's going back to 
my safety zone. It's going back to my comfort, my place of comfort, my place of solitude. Because if I get tired of you, I can just tell you, listen, uh, I'm going to see you tomorrow. I'm going to tell you I I'm going to go to bed because if I tell you, well, listen, I'm just, I'm just going to chill the rest of the afternoon and fall back. It's like, okay, so why can't I chill with you? Right? Because that's not, I, I need to, that, that's what I need for me. And that is a very insensitive, insensitively taken perspective, as right as it may be, as right as that person may be. Because if I have to go to work tomorrow, do I really have to spend every waking moment with you? Do, I, do you really have to stay here till 11 o'clock when I go to bed? Or can you go ahead and just leave at 7 and give me those couple of hours myself to prepare for the day? Because there is a preparation for the next day. But everybody can't accept that. Because the id, again, being prevalent, wants what it wants, it wants it now, and it wants all the time that it can get because every moment with you is satisfying. The id. You can be sitting and be doing absolutely nothing but watching TV, a boring movie, Lifetime, something. And just, but the id is satisfied with that. We don't have to talk. We don't have to do anything. The id is okay with that. The id is just comfortable with being present because that's what it wants right now. That makes it feel comfortable. And then when we see people who are together who struggle with that because the other person is not active in that those moments together that you're here and I'm there, or we're both together, but we're still not there together. You know, uh, that becomes difficult. And it is very difficult. And when you try to bring those kind of things up to one another, it's automatically going to be a conflict because the id says, oh, what, what the, yo, I'm here, right? What's the issue? That's what you wanted, right? You wanted me to be here, so I'm here. Oh, so does being here mean I have to be over there and I have to be doing this? So it's a whole back and forth that happens. So it's an id fight. Your id fighting with my id and vice versa. That's what's actually happening. And again, we're talking today about the id. We haven't gotten to the ego and the superego because there's so much to, that I wanted to cover on you understanding the id and forcing your id to be patient. Now, in me forcing your id to be patient, right? One or two things happen. Either you tuned out of the show, even with the show still being on, you just tuned out because you were waiting for the ego and the super ego conversation. You're probably frustrated, not you, your head, frustrated because like, what was the need to drag this out? The show going to end in five minutes and we still ain't got to the ego, super ego. I don't know if I can tune in next next Sunday because the show is held on Sundays typically. This is a special episode. I don't know if I can tune in next Sunday. I got things to do. So what you usually do on Sunday is just lay in and chill anyway. But because it didn't happen your way, now you, oh, you, I can't tune in next week. So now I got to go, what, find your show and then who you think. This is what the it does, folks. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you what the id does without the ego and the superego that we haven't talked about yet because we just ain't got there yet. So it's been, it's been more of a, a, an experiential show, which I try to do a lot of things experiential, experientially because I want, you to, I want you to hear what's being said, but I also want you to experience it at the same time. So you just ask yourself how many times did you laugh at yourself 
were some of the things that I said about behavior. You know, like when you tell somebody to come pick you up, they come and pick you up, they're outside blowing the horn, but you waited till they came and blew the horn even though they sent you the text message and said, I'm outside. The Ed said, well, you got a ride. They, they need to hold up a minute. They love you. You're special to them. They know who you are. They'll just wait for you. And you'll take your time ending the conversation. You'll take your time wrapping those things up. Things that you should have had wrapped up an hour ago because you knew eventually you were leaving, right? But you take your time doing all those things. Now they're sitting out in the car waiting for you. Right? And they're doing things to keep themselves occupied, playing with their phone, talking to whoever may be in the car with them. They're doing all those things. But all the while, the id is waiting for you. Because after all, I did get dressed, threw something on when I was sitting home in my pajamas where it was warm, where it was comfortable. And now I got to go bundle up. I got to go jump into this cold car. I got to do this for you. So you must gonna be doing me real good tonight. Like fixing me a real good dinner, you cooking tonight. Uh, but that's what it, that's what happens, people, all the time. And then when you finally get out there, she said something to you about how long you took, and you want to get the grizzlies about it now instead of saying, "I, I'm sorry. I should have been prepared." You go into a whole bunch of other theatrical stuff, and now you've offended that person even more, you had them waiting, and now you want to grind me up because I'm saying something to you about having me out here for 20 minutes waiting on you. But if I say to you, call me when you are ready, and you're sitting there and you put your coat on, and I get there a few minutes later, now you're complaining because I'm hot. I sat in there in the coat all the time, and it was hot sitting in there, and I'm sweating, and I probably get a cold. And it never ends, folks. It just never ends. And that's what's destroying our relationships. They're unmanaged by the ego and superego because of things we are failing to do to bring about an increased awareness of the unconsciousness that presents itself in its life because we keep consciously doing things and don't realize that unconsciously we are doing things as well. And when somebody said something, says something about what it is we're doing, you know, and we're telling them that they're not conscious of what it is they're doing, that's why we're telling them. We don't have to tell them that they're not conscious. Just me telling you what you just did affected me negatively. Consciously, you defend yourself because you said that's not what you did, but you're not realizing unconsciously you're doing these things for a particular reason. And it has more to do with the id satisfying itself and not taking responsibility because the id is totally irresponsible. <sighs> yeah. As always, it was a pleasure. I thank you all for joining in. I appreciate you all. Uh, you can be doing anything else on a Monday morning. Stay after Christmas. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of sales jumping off. Some of y'all trying to avoid those lines. Some of y'all was getting ready to go out. You were getting dressed and getting ready to go out there and hit them up by the early because most of them opened up at like 7.30, 8 o'clock. Then you start sitting down and getting into the show. And now you're going to blame me. Uh, man, I missed that Pac-Man game that they had on sale. Sitting there messing around, listening to the Sabir this morning. Yeah, that's what the head going to tell you. I told you don't need to listen to them shows anyway. Dude don't know what he's talking about. You need to go about your business and find something else. You know, T.D. Jakes be on a little bit. Why are you watching him? <laughs> it's just, listen. All I'm saying is, listen, I appreciate you. There's so much more you could be doing in your day. And for whatever reason, only God knows, you continue to support and uh, uh, join in uh, every Sunday. 
today is Monday, you still joined in uh, Tuesday nights, the same things. Listen, I get out of the way. I, you know, I try to make sure that I'm rightly guided. Ain't none of this scripted. Even when I'm talking to you, you know, from uh, sites that I'm looking at, this ain't scripted, folks. I'm reading to you what it says, and I'm applying it to our daily lives. You know, it's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to save myself first. And reaching back is trying to save others. But you got to save yourself first. You got to go back and you got to look at yourself and look at what you can do to improve before you can attempt to save anybody else. So that's what I do when I'm talking to you. I'm saving myself. You know, they're reminders for myself about the things that I need to look at as well. You know, and, and the reality of it is everybody ain't willing to do that. Everybody's not ready for that aspect of self. They did something. You know, you start looking at your head, you start seeing a side of yourself that you really don't like. And you can't continue to avoid that. Oh, matter of fact, we'll discuss that on the next show when we start talking about the ego and the super ego. Yeah, because today, we just hadn't gotten there yet. Again, I appreciate you all. Be safe. Enjoy your holiday. For those of you who I don't get a chance to see next Sunday, listen, Happy New Year. Make it a different one. Dig deeper. Make it prosperous in the sense of you being better this year, next year, than you were this past year. Be better next year. Do better next year. Peace.